Good morning and welcome to Tuesday morning prayer and I do apologize for any inconvenience that you may have had trying to get online to watch the live stream channel. It's been an arduous, well what time is it now? It's just gone nine o'clock. Since four o'clock this morning we've been trying to resolve lots of the issues with live stream and Apple Mac but I pray that we have resolved it. And it's good to have you here with us this morning. I'm going to light a candle now, and if you've got a candle nearby, I would love you to light your candle with ours, because our morning prayer this morning is dedicated to our three new recruits who are joining the community as potential monastics. We've got Pamela in California, we've got Lisa in the United Kingdom, and we've got Father Richard in France. So I light this light in thanksgiving to God for touching the hearts of our three new members who have volunteered their heart to join us and to give of their life for unity and peace as members of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans. So we welcome you now to our morning prayer for this Tuesday morning. And we begin with our little prayers from the, the little Celtic book of prayers from Iona. And we read, If I ascend to heaven, you are there, O God. And if I make my bed in hell, still you are there with me. That's verse 8 from Psalm 139. And our opening prayer this morning is a prayer also of thanksgiving. In the beginning, O God, you shaped my soul and set its weave. You formed my body and gave it breath. Renew me this day in the image of your love. O great God, Grant me your light, O great God, grant me your grace, O great God, grant me your joy this day, and let me be made pure in the well of your health. Amen. And now we begin with our morning prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Tuesday morning we commune with the angel of joy saying, angel of joy, descend upon earth and give beauty to all beings. You then reflect and feel yourself absorbing vibrations of joy from the beauties of nature as you contemplate the colors of sunrise, the song of a bird, and the aroma of flowers. So let us just do just that and come into the cathedral of God, the landscape and allow yourself to sit and be still in the presence of God. And now for our first reading, we're going to the Psalms, the Book of Psalms, and we're going to ask the Spirit to guide us and speak to us. Psalm 92. It's a glorious feeling to be able to unload my heart to spill out my gratitude in thanks to you, O Lord. Morning, noon, and night, I want the whole world to know of your love. I want to shout it, to sing it, in every possible way to proclaim your praises, to express my joy. How great are you, O Lord, your thoughts are unfathomable, your ways beyond comprehension, and all the while 
we are still confounded over the problem of evil, we simply cannot understand why the ungodly appear to be so successful, why good fortune seems to follow those who defy you. But we know their success is short-lived. Those who refuse to return to you will never find that ultimate and total fulfillment that is promised to the sons and daughters of God. The children of God, those who open their lives to you, portray the wonder and the beauty of your spirit. They are like springs of water in a parched world. They flourish even amid the distortions and the ugliness around them. Their lives are rich and productive in barren and desolate society. Help us, those of us who love you, O oh God, to prove to our disjointed world that you are in our midst. Amen. What is that reading saying to you? What is it saying to your heart? Well, whatever it's saying, honour it and reclaim it as God's message to you. And now we read from Jesus now, and again I hold the book in the presence of God, and I ask the Spirit of God to speak to us. Ah, feet washing servanthood. In the Christian Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 9, verse 35, we read, And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all, and servant of all. Just forgive me, I need a drink. I'm really thirsty. Oh, that's good. When you aspire to some position of leadership, mark well Christ's example as your Lord and Master. As Jesus did not hesitate to perform the humblest act of service on behalf of his followers, so you Christian leaders ought to emulate him and realize that the humblest and most unpretentious act of loving service toward their constituents is service to God and his kingdom. While the leaders of this world often seek their ends through coercion or manipulation, bribery or compromise, the leaders of Christ's kingdom accomplish their objectives by way of self-sacrificing love. Jesus is not recommending or guaranteeing that this kind of leadership will bring worldly glory or success. Indeed, the world will regard such activities as very foolish, even cowardly and impotent. Even many who profess Christ's names are more attracted by strong, authoritative, spectacular activities which they associate with true leadership. These may titillate the imaginations and loyalties of many peoples, they seldom bring people into the kingdom, nor do they please the heart of God. Jesus did not call his disciples to positions of leadership. He sent them forth to be the servants of the kingdom by serving their fellow beings. In the process of doing this, most of them were guided by his spirit into positions of leadership. They followed the example of Christ set before them, many of them literally losing their lives in the process of serving humanity by proclaiming and demonstrating his redeeming love. Nor does Jesus call you to be leaders. He called you to be servants, to lovingly stoop even to the feet-washing level of your neighbor's needs that God's infinite love may be revealed through you. Wow. 
there is something in there that we all need to reflect upon. That we are all in service to God in each other. And yet we know from our own personal experiences of how servants of God can overreact and become quite egotistical and manipulative in their interpretation of that particular reading. I've seen it myself where members of various faith traditions can become quite egotistical and they have a lot of their children, God's children, in subservience to them. They resurrect a lot of fear and guilt that if they don't do as they say, they'll be punished by God. Well, that isn't the God I follow, nor is it the God I love. And it's certainly not the God I've given my life to in service for unity and peace as an interfaith Franciscan. God calls each one of us to love. And he calls us to joy. Like Francis, like Mother Teresa of Calcutta, now Saint Teresa, he calls us to meet him in the marginalized, in the poverty-stricken, in the prisoner, do those on death row, those in our hospices, those who are homeless, even the drug users and those involved in the sex industry. He calls us to be a light shining in the dark, not to preach God, but to bring God's love to them and to let Christ touch them through our hands and our feet. Let us be still. For you and I are in the presence of God. Can you feel that presence? Can you sense the Spirit of God hovering over you during this live broadcast? Well, I can. And at quarter to seven, quarter to eight this morning, I said, Lord, if you want us to go live, and to share your love and your word, then you're going to have to get your finger out and help us resolve these technical issues with Livestream and Apple Mac. And clearly he did. And we thank God for interceding for us and for showing us his will. But often in the midst of the crises, we have to step back and we have to listen to our heart. And very often we have to stand aside or move aside and allow Christ touch others without us getting in the way. So we come now to another reading, and the reading for today is Getting What You Want. In the reading from St. James chapter 4 verse 2 we read, You do not have because you do not ask. Now, there's one. There are benefits you won't receive unless you ask for them. Plus, asking and receiving works wonders for your self-esteem. Imagine the joy these five women felt when their petition was granted. Obviously, they were emotionally secure, or they wouldn't have tried it. So as a redeemed child of God, declare, if God be for us, who can be against us? Timing is important. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences, Proverbs 27, verse 12, and the daughters of Zeolophad spoke up while they were still in the wilderness. The promised land hadn't yet been conquered. There's nothing like good planning. You can't just sit around and assume others are thinking about your welfare. For example, after the, 
after the raises are announced, it is not the time to petition your boss for an increase. Zalolafad's daughters made life better for every other woman in Israel. So by speaking up and confronting the situation, not only will you be blessed, others will too. Strive for a win-win situation. The battle was not yet over. The daughters of Zelophehad had uncles who appealed the new ruling, pointing out that if these women married men outside their tribe, then their land holdings would go to other tribes. So God made another ruling. To possess land, you must only marry within your own tribe. Numbers 36 verses 5 to 11. And when it comes to marriage, spiritually speaking, that principle still applies. She is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. The same for men. Hmm. And our final reading is from Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. And for this day, September 13th, we read, And these are the words from Jesus. Would he channel these words to this amazing spiritual being called Sarah Young? Come to me and rest. Give your mind a break from its habitual judging. You form judgments about this situation, that situation, this person, that person, yourself, and even the weather. As if judging were your main function in life. But I created you first and foremost to know me and to live in rich, commun in rich communication with me. When you become preoccupied with passing judgment, you usurp my role. Relate to me as a creature to creator, sheep to shepherd, subject to king, clay to potter. Allow me to have my way in your life. Rather than evaluating my ways with you, accept them thankfully. The intimacy I offer you is not an invitation to act as if you were my equal. Worship me as King of Kings while walking hand in hand with me down the path of life. And we thank you, Jesus, for those words. And now we come to the Benedictus, the Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and he has redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior in the house of David his servant, as he promised through our fathers from of old, a Savior who would free us from our sin, from the hands of all our enemies, so his love for our Father is revealed and his holy covenant remembered. He swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that free from fear and saved from the hands of our enemies, we might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. And as for you, little child, you shall be called a prophet of God, the Most High. You shall go before the Lord to prepare his ways before him, to make known to his people their salvation through forgiveness of their sin and the loving kindness of the heart of our God who visits us like the dawn from on high and he will give light to those, excuse me, to those who sit in darkness and those who dwell in the shadow of death. He will guide them into the way of peace. Let us pray the Gloria together. Glory be to the Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
And now we come to our morning intercessions. O Christ of the road of the wounded, O Christ of the tears of the broken, in me and with me the needs of the world, grant me my prayers of loving and hoping, grant me my prayers of yearning and healing. Let us pray now for this coming day and for healing within and among the people of God. So let us now just be still for a moment and bring your requests to Christ. And if something is really troubling you this morning, name it, bless it, and release it to a loving God in a mindset of gratitude and just conclude by saying, Thank you, God. Lord Jesus, we come into your presence as your children. We come with an open heart. And we come ready to receive your spoken word. Speak now to all our hearts. And empower us to take back our power from those who have wronged us, from those who have cheated on us, and from those who have deceived us. Empower us this day to be your child, a co-creator of God. And with Jan, we hold on, on our holding all on our healing lists, peace in the world and everyone here and in the archives. And yes, I pray today especially <clears throat> for Father Richard in France, for Pamela in California, and for our dear Lisa in the United Kingdom who volunteered to come and join the Teo community and to search for God's word for them. And we will, we, we will be welcoming them on the Feast of St. Francis, the October the 4th, his feast day, into the initial period of training, where they have the opportunity to discern if this life is for them or not. But we will hold them in our prayer and we will trust that they too will allow their hearts be touched by God without any form of guilt or baggage. I pray today for my brother Shami in Dublin, who's still in hospital waiting for his test results tomorrow. And I pray for the miracle that he hasn't got rectal carcinoma. I pray for all my family in Ireland who are all naturally worried and concerned about their brother, my brother, Shami. And we pray for all those who are ill and infirm today, for those in our hospices and hospitals, and for those who are struggling with chronic pain. We pray for those who have lost their faith in God. We pray that they will come to that place where Christ will touch them. We pray for all God's servants in ministry, especially for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, for Tich Nahan and for Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch and head of the Church of England. We pray for the men and women who've donated their hearts to God in service as monastics, religious priests, imams, Rabbis are just holy men and women living as hermits. But we pray especially for those who are discouraged or disheartened in their calling. We ask you, Lord Christ, to touch them and to give them the strength to do what you want them to do with their life. I pray for all our friends on social media, especially, especially Skip, And I pray too for Mary and Colette, for Colleen, for Caroline, and many more who give us such wonderful feedback to all our prayer leaders. 
We ask God's blessing on this live channel, our link with you and the world, where we bring one another in love and we pray for unity and peace. So let us now, just for a moment, visualize the Christ coming to you now and laying his healing hands on you and filling you with his perfect love. Just sense his peace, his love, and his joy. Let us pray the traditional Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now for our closing prayer from our little book of Celtic prayers from my own. There was me. There we go. God before us, God behind us, God above us, God beneath us. We on your path, O God, you, O God, on our way, in the twistings of the road, in the currents of the river. Be with us by day, be with us by night. Be with us by day and by night. Amen. So I wish you a restful sleep if it's your bedtime. But if it's your new day, I wish you a blessed day. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste. Shalom. Inshallah. Paxet Bonam. Om Shanti. Sola de Caritas. Salam Alaikum and may the peace of our God reawaken in you today that God is present in you and have no fear. Amen. I look forward to your company again, but for now, take care and God bless. And if you wish to join us for Vespers at five, Sister Eleanor hopefully will be leading Vespers. God bless.